All right, we move on to our discussion now. I won't call it a debate because these are a pair of ideologues who never would consider not seeing eye to eye. We're joined now live out of Canberra by front bencher, should be a minister, but he's a parliamentary secretary in the Abbott government, Simon Birmingham. Senator, thanks for your company. And I'm Evening, also Peter. joined by the head of the Institute of Public Affairs, well-known uh, right of centre uh, policy activist, let me call him, John Roskam. Thanks for your company as well. Thanks, Peter. I'll take that as a compliment. It was meant as a compliment. <laughs> and uh, Simon Birmingham, I assume you, you don't mind me getting one of your ideological fellow travellers in the shape of John Roskam on uh, for this discussion. I'm sure that he'll back you up on everything. Now, take me through the debt levy. How on earth is that good policy? Peter, what I'm confident is that the budget to be handed down uh, two weeks tonight at pretty much this precise time in, uh, in two weeks' time uh, will be a budget that tackles uh, the long-term challenges uh, we face. And there are some really big challenges we face for the long term in the structure of the budget and it requires but structural reform. But long term reforms. requires but structural reform. This debt tax has nothing to do with that. Uh, and, and this is just what I'm getting to, Peter. We must also recognise the fact in the budget uh, that we have a very significant and immediate problem around debt and deficit uh, that we have projected over the four years some $123 billion of deficit without some significant changes to policy settings. Uh, and so there are times, and there have been times in the past, and you can look at governments like the Kennett government in 92-93, where short-term measures have been used to provide some immediate relief to debt and deficit, as well as importantly dealing with the long-term issues that I'm confident this budget will do, that aren't just looking at the next two or three years, but address the budget for the next 30 or 40 years. All right, we'll take a look at that. But John Roskam, uh, you represent, you head up, in fact, a, a classic liberal think tank. Uh, can you just back up Simon Birmingham's analysis there, please? Well, Peter, that's why Simon is going to be an outstanding minister very soon, because he <laughs> gave a, a great defence of, of the government, but sadly one that I can't entirely share. Simon is correct uh, that there is a debt problem, there is a deficit problem, um, but we also have a spending problem. The message the Abbott government is sending out by saying that income taxes are going to be raised uh, at the same time as it supports the PPL, the uh, NDIS, the Gonski scheme, uh, is very dangerous for Australia. You before, I think, explained correctly the politics of this situation, which to me seems very strange. And worse than that, there's bad policy. This is going to get shoppers to shut their wallets. Uh, this is going to send a tremor uh, through people who want to strive and work hard and earn more than $80,000 a year. For the Abbott government to be even floating this, I think is absolutely bizarre, and that's putting it as kindly as I can. All right, well, we'll get to some of the policy issues that are mentioned in there, Simon Birmingham, uh, by John Roskin. But let's start with the politics. It's, it's a broken promise, plain and simple. How on earth can the Prime Minister expect any of us to keep a straight face when watching him say it's not a broken promise because it's a levy and it's temporary? He said there'd be no new taxes. Uh, a levy is the verb indicating a tax. We made it crystal clear and the Prime Minister made it crystal clear going into the election and we have certainly every day since. So there'd be no new taxes? The budget is there at the top priority uh, for this government. That, uh, of course, we're committed to getting rid of things like the carbon tax, uh, but we also are very strongly committed uh, to repairing the budget circumstances. And uh, we will do that through making government as efficient as possible. And I am quite confident uh, that you will see uh, real action on the spending side of the budget. And uh, John rightly highlighted that. And we will make sure that we strip out government waste wherever we possibly can, that we make the public service as efficient as we possibly can, that programs the government supports are focused very intensely All right, but, but Senator, on let me ask you this. Let, 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 let me ask you this. I know it's hard because there's front bench solidarity and all of that, but can you put your hand on your heart for me and just tell me that you personally have absolutely no philosophical objections to this debt tax? Well, Peter, I, I'm not into theatrics of hands on heart. Uh, what I can tell you is I am personally committed uh, to us restoring the budget to surplus as quickly as we can, as responsibly as we can, and as fairly as we can, so that where there is pain to be had, pain is shared appropriately. All right, let me jump uh, in. Let me the... jump in there. Sorry to jump in, but I just want to go to John Roskam on that. I mean, is there anything about getting the budget back to surplus you, that this puts at jeopardy? in your opinion, from a policy perspective. You mentioned before that you think it might stop people putting their hands in their wallet. Presumably that means less consumption taxes and, and a potential slowdown in the economy. Is that right? 
Ab absolutely, it'll have uh, GST impacts. Uh, it will flow through to state budgets because uh, state employees are going to be affected by these higher taxes. You can understand at one level around the cabinet table the discussion that people have to share the burden. Absolutely. But that ignores the fact that people earning more than $80,000 a year pay 60% or more of the income tax right now. It's PAYG earners who are going to be paying the tax. It's not the poor and it's not the rich. It is the PAYG earners that are getting slugged again and they're getting slugged by Tony Abbott. Now, as a 25-year member of the Liberal Party, I'm absolutely willing to put my hand on my heart and say I have grave philosophical concerns, objections um, about this. Very few people voted for the coalition to then have it six months into its first term of government raise income taxes. Well, let me jump in then, John Roskam, and, and put that to Simon Birmingham. I mean, if a, a 25 year veteran of the Liberal Party with the kind of ideological predilections that John Roskam has is so concerned about this, what on earth does that say about the way that uh, middle class voters, so called Howard Bathlers, if you will, are going to feel about this new tax? Well, of course, Peter, firstly, uh, we'll have to see what's in the budget, and I need to put that down that uh, I can't reveal and, uh, and can't even know the final detail of the budget in two weeks' uh, time. Uh, but I think more broadly, uh, we will see a lot of people who are concerned about uh, the pain and the difficult decisions that will have been taken in this budget, because they will be difficult decisions and there will be tough calls made uh, by this government. But that is because uh, we want to get the fundamentals right for the long term. We don't want to be a government, unlike the previous but, lot, but this, the, who the simply whole point, leave though, a significant here is that this isn't the fundamentals the being gotten right, isn't it, Senator? I mean, this isn't getting the fundamentals right. That's the problem. A, a debt tax get, uh, like this isn't addressing any of the structural issues. Getting the deficit under control quickly and getting the debt under control as fast as we can uh, is of course right for the next generation and to make sure that we are not passing on uh, intergenerational debt. It is also right uh, for us to make sure that we do deal with those long-term 30, 40 year fundamentals and uh, that is absolutely, I'm confident, being looked at in this budget as well and there's been plenty of budget speculation about some of the issues around sustainability of the pension and the sustainability uh, of other areas of welfare entitlement. And, so, and, 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 and commentators such as myself and I'm sure John Roskam as well have been pretty understanding about some of those sort of tough decisions but it's this debt levy where there is a lot of angst. John Roskam, let me ask you, uh, this is I guess the fair question to be fair to the government, what's your alternative? If you're not going to do this as a mechanism that can reap in uh, potentially billions of dollars uh, to help pay off debt, what's the alternative that does it in a better way? OK, you start by abolishing uh, direct action, that's let's say uh, one and a half billion dollars. Uh, you uh, don't go ahead with the paid parental leave scheme. Uh, you, uh, but that would be breaking off. an election commitment the same way that uh, introducing this debt tax is too. Well, uh, Peter, you're right, but if we're going to break election commitments, uh, let's break them for, for good purposes, uh, not for this. Uh, there is a lot of spending that can be cut through the family tax benefits part A and part B. Peter, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, the government is doing some important things. I think discussion about raising the pension age is appropriate and that should happen. Uh, but we have the NBN, we have uh, the Gonski uh, so-called reforms. Uh, the income tax in the Western world was introduced as a temporary measure in the First World War. We still have it. The Prime Minister can't talk about a temporary tax and then say, well, maybe in five years we'll have tax cuts. Uh, the symbolism of this is just disastrous. Remember, people on $80,000 are not rich. They are well off. There are teachers, there are nurses earning ninety dollars to $110,000. This isn't just going to hit uh, the wealthy. This is not about sharing the pain and the rich hurting. Uh, this is about striking at the heart of aspirational voters. These aren't even Howard Battlers. Uh, these are people who have strived, who have worked, and for Tony Abbott, six months in to be talking about raising their income taxes is again, as I said, 
absolutely bizarre. All right, thanks for that, John Roskin. One final question for you, Senator Simon Birmingham. Paid parental leave. I read a feature about it today in The Australian. There's also a front-page story from Phil Curry in The Australian Financial Review. There is dissent in the ranks in the Senate. Senator Macdonald expressed some of that today. We've had Corey Bernardi being quite clear about it. John Wacker-Williams is none too happy. And even Barnaby Joyce, front bench colleague of yours, has said today that the reality is, is that the numbers just aren't there in the Senate. The numbers aren't there in your own party in the Senate either, are they? Peter, uh, I expect this policy will go through all the proper uh, processes of the party when legislation is drafted and of course everybody will have their opportunity uh, to have their say on legislation through those proper processes. You could uh, be sitting there processes. on your own, they all cross the floor, is, Senator. Uh, but it, but it, is, uh, it is important, Peter, uh, that we make sure that this debate is informed by the need for us to address the productivity question and you just of course were contemplating that in a previous segment and the importance of Australia having strong productivity growth and so much of that is linked to workforce participation and paid parental leave schemes have been demonstrated to provide greater workforce participation in the long run from women, from working mothers. And so it's a very important structure for us to get right. Uh, no other country in the world has a paid parental leave scheme that is based on the minimum wage. Uh, so it's right for us to have a look at the appropriate policy settings. We've taken the policy to the last two elections in this regard. It, of course, has been fundamentally supported, just as our policy to get the budget back under control. Is. All right, John Roscombe, I know you'd want to respond to that because you disagree with the policy you mentioned it already, but we are out of time. Really appreciate both your company today on the program. John Roskin from the Institute of Public Affairs and Senator Simon Birmingham, uh, front bencher, should be a minister. With a performance like that, <laughs> Senator, I tell you what, you've got to go straight in the ministry. You are well and yeah, truly uh, holding the line for the government. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks. For, appreciate your time. Thank Thanks, you. Peter.